Hello, guys. Um, we're going to do a follow-up on the hand sanitizer video. I'd like you to be able to um, calculate, make, do the necessary calculations to make your own hand sanitizer, basically from whatever materials you have on hand. Uh, the calculations are very simple, and they're based on percentages. So, first of all, uh, if we look um, at our paper here, we have the, the recipe for hand sanitizer is basically the alcohol of any sort. Uh, isopropanol and grain alcohol are the two most common uh, alcohols to use for this purpose. Uh, and it should be between 60 and 70 percent. That's the sweet spot, the, the, the working range. If it's below 60 percent, uh, it may not kill all of the bacteria and or viruses. If it's above 70 percent, you're wasting alcohol. Um, it should also have, so, uh, somewhere around 60 to 70 percent alcohol. It should also have um, aloe uh, or glycerol is very po uh, two popular choices at around 30 percent. So the mixture is, and you know, once you've got, you know, you poured in uh, 70 percent of, of ethanol and, and 30 percent of glycerol, you make it up to the volume you were aiming for, shooting for in the first place with, uh, um, you make up the volume with water. Okay. Uh, the reason for the glycerol or the aloe is, is really very simple. Um, I've seen some references that try to make it uh, more complicated, but they're not particularly credible. A popular explanation is hydrogen bonding, but that explanation falls through when you realize that unless the pH is uh, very high, there, there would be no hydrogen bonding in the mixture. The reason that the aloe or glycerol is there is as a gelling agent. If you poured pure ethanol on your hands, it would it's it's much less viscous than water. It would simply run between your fingers and disappear. And we want the alcohol to stay on our hands for 20 seconds at least. Uh, and hence the gelling agent. Okay, so um, uh, use it for 20, um, 20 seconds. And that ran off the side of the paper, didn't it? So, uh, 20 seconds on hands. How's that? Probably still off the paper. Okay. Um, let's see. Alcohol can also be, it's often measured in, in a, a unit called a proof. Okay, uh, this is what you'd find in the, gro we don't, uh, this is California, in the grocery store or, or wherever you were going to buy. Um, it's commonly used for liquor. Okay, proof measures the content of ethanol in an alcoholic beverage. So it's just for alcoholics, don't drink that yourselves, kids. Um, is two times the percentage. So, for example, a uh, 120 proof would be 60% uh, uh, alcohol. 120, so it's two times the percentage, and that's because two times 60% equals 120 proof. Okay. Now, laboratory uh, grade ethanol, if you can buy that. Um, is usually at 95% or there's something called anhydrous alcohol, usually referred to as ethanol, uh, which is actually at 100%, but they make it 100% um, using something called benzene. Uh, anhydrous alcohol should not be consumed. So, uh, if we were using 95% ethanol, and we want 100 milliliters of uh, sanitizer, and let's say that we wanted this to be at um, let's shoot in the middle, shall we? 65% uh, final concentration of ethanol. Okay. 
Uh, we can use an equation. So here's our our problem. We're using um, laboratory grade ethanol, and so the amount we'd want to use would be uh, well the amount that we'd need, say a hundred milliliters at 65 percent would tell us how much ethanol we should actually uh, have. And uh, so six, uh, all right, so that's, that's how much would be there. So uh, is the amount of ethanol. Now we're going to take, we're going to make that amount from 95% ethanol. So we would, the amount that we'd need uh, would be equal to uh, some number of milliliters that we don't know yet. So we'll represent that unknown with X times 95% ethanol. Okay, so to find out what the volume is, we would simply say that x milliliters would divide by the 95%. We have 100 mil times 65% over 95%. And with a handy dandy calculator, you would find that that is uh, 68.42. So we will use x is equal to 68.4 milliliters. And that would give us, right in the middle of the sweet spot, 65% uh, uh, ethanol. So if there's some error, say we make it simple and we just use, um, go to 70%, uh, 70 milliliters, so we could say that our recipe is going to be 70 milliliters of 95% ethanol. And then we want 30%. We're making 100 milliliters. So how many milliliters of 100% glycerol would we need to make uh, 100 milliliters of 30% using the same formula? Uh, 100 times 30 is equal to 30 times X. Uh, we can see right away we're going to need 30 milliliters of glycerol. Okay, so that's our recipe. Um, and 70 and 30 is 100 milliliters. We don't need to add any water at all. Okay. Now, this would be the same for um, 190 proof Everclear. It's a commercial alcohol available in the liquor stores for uh, the very serious minded. Okay, now 190 proof is equal to 95% uh, alcohol. Everclear is just um, much more expensive than laboratory grade ethanol. You need a, lab, uh, a, a, a certificate to buy laboratory grade ethanol. Everclear, you just need an ID. Um, so it would be the same recipe. So basically we're talking 70 mil of the alcohol, which is 95% or better, and 30 mil of glycerin. Okay. Now another common, um, alcohol that's available is isopropanol. In drugstores, now this is also called rubbing alcohol, and in drugstores it's usually present at 70% or 90%, get the 90%, and this can be used for hand sanitizer as well. Uh, in which case, say we wanted to make, so for a hundred mil of isopropanol, um, sanitizer, uh, we would need 90% times X mil, because what we want for 100 mil is, you know, so 100 milliliters, 
and we want it to be, let's shoot again for right in the middle of the 60 to 70 zone at 65%. Okay, so our volume is 100 mil times 65% over the 90%. Um, see that? Okay, so uh, 100 times 65 divided by 90, 72, uh, 72 milliliters. Well, that would be impossible if we wanted to add 30 milliliters of, of glycerol because we'd come to 102, right? 102 milliliters final. Uh, so we could just use the glycerol to 100 milliliters if it's less than... Frankly, I find the 30% glycerol rather sticky. You know, it makes your hands kind of slippery. Let's put it that way. Um, so you could go less on the, on the glycerol. So we could say 72 milliliters of isopropanol. Okay. And then uh, 28 milliliters of glycerol. Alright, so those are the calculations. It basically is the initial percent times the volume um, and that's going to be equal to our final per percent times uh, the desired volume. Okay, and that's the formula we've been using for these recipes. Okay, um, well, hand sanitizer, I don't know how I can bring it any more down to earth than that for you, but let's look at a, at a, at a related problem. Okay. I'm, I'm so hoping the sound is getting recorded on this. Uh, let's adjust the camera here. Okay. Um, so some restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes uh, cut DNA at uh, specific sites. They, uh, so some of these restriction enzymes, which cleave or cut DNA at certain sites, um, relax their specificity, their uh, sequence specificity under standard under uh, standard conditions. Most um, this relates to that the fact that most commercial enzymes are stored in 50% glycerol. Okay, but they will not work correctly if the final concentration of glycerol. Um, when you're using these these enzymes, like restriction enzymes, uh, purified from uh, bacteria, usually, and then stored in a freezer in 50% glycerol to last a long time, and then when you need it, um, it has to be diluted to the point that the 50% glycerol that it's stored in is um, less than 5%. It will not work. It will not work correctly if the final concentration of glycerol is greater than 5%. Okay? Uh, and this is for most e uh, enzymes that you could buy, which have been isolated from biological organisms and are used commercially. Um, and for example, the, uh, t the, the, um, one of the kinds of tests for COVID-19. There are generally two uh, types of tests. Uh, the first, the diagnostic tests, um, which you and I could get if they were available. Uh, and then the serologic or blood tests. And these are usually testing for antibodies. Okay? Most of the diagnostic tests are done with the polymerase chain reaction or uh, the polymerase chain reaction. Anybody know that's called PCR? Okay? This can, um, often it uses an enzyme called uh, TAC polymerase and uh, for uh, initially the enzyme was purified from an 
organism called Thermo Aquaticus. Okay. Um, tap polymerase is stored in 50% glycerol. Okay. What's the maximum volume of the enzyme uh, that can be used in a 55 microliter COVID-19 diagnostic test? Okay. If you put too much enzyme in there, the glycerol concentration will be greater than 5% and the tap polymerase will not work correctly and the person's test will not be uh, will not be correct. It didn't work. So if it didn't work, that's a negative result, but it would be what's called a false negative. So if the percentage of glycerol is greater than 5%, then you would get a false negative. Okay, so we have basically 50% What's the maximum number of, so we're going for a 55 microliter um, reaction, and microliters are represented with the symbol mu and L. So what's the maximum amount? So we have 5% glycerol is the maximum percentage, and that's going to be in 55 microliters. So the maximum number of microliters we can use before we mess up the test is 5% times 55 microliters divided by 50%. So that's going to be 5.5. Uh, so 5 times 55 divided by 50 is 5.5 microliters. So that's the maximum amount of enzyme you can put in there. You can put a lot less than 5.5 microliters in to the reaction, but you see the point. Okay, so I hope that you can see that doing calculations with percentages can be quite useful, uh, both for making your own hand sanitizer at home and for fighting a global pandemic on the front lines. So I'll see you all soon. Have a good day. Other way. There we are. Bye.